All right. It is week four in CIT 28. Client server databases. Really, we should just rename this Learning SQL. So for this week, um, coming into week four, the Monday is a holiday. So just know that in this class, if a campus holiday falls on a due date, the item is moved one day. The due I date is moved one day forward. So you can see here that this discussion is on the third instead of on the second, which is Monday. And by the way, calendar is great. I think um, in Canvas, I hope you use it. Um, we're going to talk a bit about the problem sets today because we're going to do only problem sets this week. Uh, but in general, you're going to you're going to see a a change to the README file for problem sets. For lectures, they're still going to be the same. You'll be taking notes, but we're going to again. I just want to give you that because I know that as we move forward, these things become more clear and as I see work submitted it helps me clarify some requirements as well. But before we talk too much I do want to say a bit about the grade comments because I've had some really good conversation in students grades like so every day that I wake up uh, now this morning I'm running a little bit late right so actually we're in week three of the real world and I graded yesterday and and so I haven't made my way through them because I wanted to get this video down, done so that I can release content. So, but in general, my goal is daily to grade. And so, but what happens is based on the volume of what I get, it's pretty high. And what happens is sometimes, because the only way I see your comments is actually if I go look in a specific spot in my campus email for a, a flag or just a, a notice about that. And sometimes based on the volume, I don't get it. So if you put a comment, this is what I want you to know. If you put a comment in there and I don't reply to you and you expect them to reply, you know, send me an email in Canvas, right? Because that's a great way if for some reason, give me a little time. I mean, hopefully I'll see it. But sometimes, again, just based on the volume I'm, I have, it may get lost. Okay. Okay. So the most common um, questions I got last week was, how do I sign up? And you'll see that sign up as we after we pass the midway. I think I've kind of landed on somewhere after the midway part of the semester. We don't have a traditional midterm in this class. So at that spot, I will have laid out at least a draft of all the dates and times that I will offer uh, code these technical interview sessions. And then here's the deal. I have this class and then I have two other sections of my programming class. So all the all of you will have will get this schedule. And I'm actually going to time it so that you all get it at the same time, so to speak. This is actually going to be a benefit to being on Discord as well. Uh, the thing is, well, actually, because I'll put that notice out there, because what happens is there'll be a submission where you'll submit, hey, here's the date I want, and then I'll do the first come, first serve as far as putting it in the schedule. So you won't actually have to input anything. You'll just tell me I want these se that session time. Now, I get that maybe the times I offer may not always work for you, and I will do my best to accommodate. And this is why from the time the opening of the session becomes you know, available for you to sign up for, it'll be probably week 10, and it'll go all the way through. So we'll have seven weeks for you to have a session somewhere. You only need to do one. Can you do it again? You can if, if it really doesn't go well. Typically I say, you know, um, now this kind of brings up the other common question, like how would I prepare for it? Well, the work you're doing here prepares you for it. And this is going to lead to a change that I'm going to make in the authenticate file. But because one of the things I get, actually I'm going to hold that. So anyway, we'll hold that discussion for that item in this attendance. But so authentically doing the work that we are doing in this class is your best way to prepare for it. Because um, it's not that I would need to actually have you know every exact command. I'd want to see your thinking process. Like how do you break things down when you when you are given a problem? How do you approach that? 
And here's where in the world we live in, it gets a little more challenging. That's why the more authentic you're doing this work, that and it's going to help you. Okay, so that was the most common questions I got, and some people were nervous. So the last thing I'll say about this is this is a great reason to come into office hours with me or connect with me so that you and I can have a conversation because sometimes part of the nervousness is just not knowing the person that is doing the interview, okay? So, you know, and I get it. Some people are like, I just don't do well at interviews. Well, this is not a formal interview, right? This is me uh, attempting to assess how well you have um, gained the knowledge and skill in this class. Okay. So again, we'll have more questions and you're welcome to ask more here. I'm sure I forgot some. I tried to answer what I saw was the most common. So for this attendance, let's move on to, let's talk about the data set. So for this week, we are only doing problem sets. And this is going to be based on normal ocean temperatures. And so what I want to do in this attendance is actually get you acquainted with, because it's one of the really important things you do when you actually have a new data set you're dealing with is actually getting some time just playing with the data set before you jump in and try to answer your first problem right to write query to give the correct output so I'm going to show you the process matter of fact well I looked at the instructions so this is for the first item right so I'm going to actually just do this with you right now and then show you how to actually you know, what things I would do and what things I did do as I approached this new data set that I hadn't seen before. Okay. All right. So in the, I have my code space open. I'm going to drop my video, put it over there. So over here in my code space, I have a new code space open today just because I wanted to kind of authentically do this. So I have the, so what you want to do here is inside your PS0, you have the cyber chase directory right so you want to click on ps0 create a new folder called normals and it should have an s it should be lowercase okay because it's normal normals <laughs> meaning normal ocean temperatures okay so then in here the first thing i'd recommend you do and again this is part of the instruction for the first item so we're getting ahead a little bit right uh actually Oh, I, good, I just saw an error. I need to fix that because this is not, yeah, this is still P0. Okay, good, yeah. So in this case, I'm going to, now, and I'm going to talk about this for a minute because I know what I've shown students, I'm going to go back to the codes, I've grabbed that URL. So right here when you open by default, right, your terminal is setting, oop, I don't need that. All right. <laughs> Hold on. That was funny. I had accidentally, if you noticed, actually clicked over here and got comments. I was like, why is that showing up? So part of this, right, is just learning. The more time you spend navigating this interface, the better, right, just in general. And this is true. VS Code is such a popular editor. Anyway, back to here. Okay, so in here, what I've shown students is kind of the easy way, open an integrated terminal. And so what it will do is this folder, right? So if you open an integrated terminal, we'll change this. But you can also just do CD, like just at the command line. So if I want to do PS, I hit tab, it actually says, oh, looks at the directory and says, okay, there's only one PS. So if I do in, now it'll just go to normal, right? So you that's the alternative and just good to know about how to do that, okay? So now in here, and I'd wanna make sure I'm in this, I now would paste, uh, allow, right? So this is making sure I'm in that subdirectory and now I'm gonna paste and now I'm getting the normal file. Now this is where you really have to be careful and notice this is actually 28 megs. So this file is rather large. And so in this case, just make sure, because if you did that command, you know, somehow incorrectly, because remember we did a curl command, it said copy it over from there. And if you're in the wrong directory, it will 
it may not work or place it somewhere you don't want it to be okay so that's the first thing so now right I'd clear and now that I have it right so now I could do sqlite3 and normals.db okay so the other thing is I always start with right select star and in this case from but you kind of go wait a minute I haven't even dug into yet Rio and this is part of what I want you to get to know uh, I, I haven't even dug into this to the structure so what I would do is dot schema okay now dot schema whew, large right these are all the columns in here and by the way, if it was me, I would probably copy at least some of this so I didn't have to keep looking back into that readme file. That would be a fine thing. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to have you do that, right? So in other words, I do have you end up creating a readme, which I will talk about the new requirements, you know, here, right? And then I'll have you do, of course, your normal heading there, right? So this would be problem set uh, zero normals okay and then this would be possibly right uh, data the normals data set okay so what I could do is take that content and there's different ways to do this we're not going to get too much into this because I don't want to get too much into the weeds here right so I could copy that and I could always have that in here and that way when I start to write queries I would have it and what was cool is I generally do this, but I actually saw a, another student, I think it was Oscar, do this as well. And it's a really good thing to have in there, right? So that'd be the first thing I would do. And I recommend, you know, you're following along right now uh, with me as well. Now, what you will end up doing uh, is actually creating, like I said before, right, a heading for problem one through six, okay? So I'm not going to create them all. It just takes longer, but that's the part you want to do. Uh -oh. Right. So I'd come down here, and then it'd be problem. Oh, must have accidentally started typing off the keyboard. Problem one. Okay. So, but that's just the start of the README file. And so now what we want to do is start understanding what is in here. So we have an ID, we have a lat and long, and then we have these fields. 0M, 5M. So you can look at either Harvard's, um, I'm sorry, um, yeah, Harvard's uh, page for this, right, for normal temperatures, because this is also in our file, right, so our file here, okay, so you can come down here and look at here it is as well and you could copy it just like this that's one of the things often you want to do so we have an ID that uniquely identifies the coordinates what does that mean right so if you don't know what Latin long is right so if you what is Latin long so latitude and longitude is a coordinate system that uses angles to describe the location of any space right any space on our surface it is used for so many things if you've never seen it, it it'll be like what in the world right but you can see a visual here so we've broken the earth into uh, these uh, coordinates but also within them is even more detailed uh, lat and long so that we can have precise data for locations on earth but for our data set we're only looking at ocean temperatures so coordinates for ocean temperatures but just because it is good to understand you could just go lat and long um, let's just do lat and long for Fresno just to see what that number would look like right so in here we have 36 right uh, and 119 and oftentimes and in the data set you'll see this and in the data set it will only have the number then the decimal and then the first place I believe uh, in there and we can look at that in a minute and the longitude would be a minus number okay so would we would in this case start thinking about this would Fresno be in our data set and the answer is no because we're only look at coordinates that are in the ocean okay 
So that's where you um, just understand the coordinate system that we have. And where Fresno in this case, here we have it, right, has this, this is a specific location, right? So if you actually were to go to Google Maps, maps.google.com, right, and we search in Maps for Fresno, if you've ever looked up in here, right, those are the lat and long. And if I click somewhere else, then the lat and long would change. And matter of fact, here it will give you the lat and long. So in this case, from Madera County. Okay. So these, this lat and long is used in a lot of different spaces. I could zoom out. And then I could start looking at over the ocean if I hit Latin long. Okay, so now I can see these here. Now you might think this exact location would be in that data set, and it wouldn't be because of the way it, uh, the space that encompasses, like it's a large amount of space. <laughs> I mean, even at the size of this database, the quadrant that they've uh, used to uh, indicate the Latin long is wide okay and I'll, I'll show you what I mean um, by this in a minute but first I just want you to understand what is Latin long okay and I'm going to come back to this because I, I played around with a way in Google to actually go to some of these locations okay so let's go back to let's see let's go back okay let's go back to the schema actually like let's go back to the work the whew, I have so many things open here we go so in this case, we have the ID, we have the lat and the long, okay? And then we have 0M, 5M. So this is the temperatures, right? So these are the column names, and this is all numeric data, right? For zero, so at, at the surface, at five meters, at 10 meters, so on and so forth. And notice there's a lot of data here, which is why our first query probably it should not be, right, select all <laughs> because it's just going to be so long so what we probably want to do is actually do let's do and let's go ahead and set up our file let's go ahead and set up our ps right zero um da, da, da. Oh, what is the name of the file hold on did i get that right right i had to remind myself right so in this case right we're doing under here ah I accidentally and and by the way if this ever happens to you where you start to create something you haven't finished it you can right click and rename so it's actually ps uh, p1 okay so part one right dash q dot sql now we have had a query name that before but that was up in cyber chase okay so now i have that file so now i can do select and again, I wouldn't do star. This and this is just our playing around, right? So in this case, let's do this. Let's just do like getting to know the uh, normals data set. And again, yes, I want you to have this in there, right? Okay. So now, what would we do, right? So we could come back over here. And by the way, the other thing I like to do is often have um, two things that I'm looking at, like I can and I can split my screen. So, because I don't always want to type these out, so I could say select lat, right? So actually I could just do the quotes as well. Okay, select lat, comma. Remember, if you want more than one, it's a comma. The second one, right? Now you want to know from, right? So now let's go back over here. Let's actually kind of minimize because I have I have a lot of things here and I kind of want to be able to see here, right? From. Right, so this would be normals, right? Okay, so select those from normals. And matter of fact, let's go ahead and get as well, right? The O M, right? And let's get the five M. Okay, from normals. And let's do this. Let's limit, right? Twenty. Okay, so now that I have that. Right, I have my and and I haven't even set up my other terminals right yet uh, more than anything, because I don't have to do a proof on this file right. I'm we're just getting to know the database right. So here I could just say dot read right p one dot dash q dot sql okay. Oh ah and what did I forget? 
Ah, very good. And see, this is where you start playing with. Okay, did I have everything in there? Select latitude from normal. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize there was select on the line. So that's the other thing, right? Is just seeing the errors. So dot read p one dot q dot sql. Good. Okay. And by the way, just as a standard, we should all be using box. It just an up arrow now. Cool, right? So I can start looking at these. So I see my lat and my longs. All right. So here are the locations. Here's the uh, temperature, right? So this is the temperature at those locations. So this is good. This is like us getting to know, right? And then you continue. And this will be one of the things I'll suggest is like write maybe a, a, a sample query, right? And, you know, tell the class what it is you played with. This will be part of your output that you would do here. But just to complete this, right? So again, I'm, this is part of getting to know the data set, right? So what I would do is go ahead and add my other one. Right, I still need to do, uh, I'm going to do the P and I'm going to do normal, right? I'm going to do SQL light 3 and then normals.db, cool, right? And here's where I would only one time here, okay, out. Now this would be PW1.text. Did I say P? Probably part one, okay? So I've created that output file. Now again, you don't have to do a proof of cons uh, proof uh, file on this one, but the idea is that you have that one set up. And then I've noticed many of you that I've been talking to have also been having, you know, you go through and name them. So this would be your Git workflow. Okay. Okay. So that's just a taste of what I think, and this hopefully will help you, right? So basically what we did here is we walked through and go ahead and let's, let's do this, right? Let's go ahead and finish this, right? Because if I remember right, matter of fact, let me go ahead and get out of here, right? There we go, okay? So I'm going to clear this, right? So now I got out of there. Oh, and actually I could have used that one because I already had it open, but I will. Get add star, right? Get commit dash m right set up complete oh yeah okay i'm going to bring that back because i made a mistake okay cool and get push i'm going to see if i get that because i think when i did this originally because that file was so big so it's writing that takes it a minute warning do 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 so when you get this warning and this is part of why i wanted to do this today right large files detected what you want to do here and i think this should be fine if, if you go over to your github make sure i think this i'm using a new one called course repo so i'd want to make sure that under that normals yeah that database came across and again that's part of why i wanted to show you this because i knew that do an error when I originally did it. Okay, so make sure you do that first commit. So now let's finish up talking about this requirement I'm adding. So four, and we're 23 minutes in. So, and and so in your reply, right, I want you to play around, write another query, you know, and tell the class what you wrote, like, and why you wrote it and what you did to get used to that. Oh, and by the way, the thing I didn't show you, and you could play with this, is actually uh, in Google Maps, you could, okay, I am gonna show you this because I think it's fun to see. Uh, in this case, let's go back to here. Actually, I gotta go back into, let's see if I go up enough, right? And then I could do P, uh, dot read p1 dash q dot sql squeal <laughs> right so if i wanted to do 77 right so i could actually do this i did this before and it was really fun to see so if i do 77 comma and then i come back and grab the other one right so 77 one 68 let's see where that's at and you you know it, it'll be somewhere out in the ocean but it's still fun to see it's like oh yeah look at that so that's where it is so if i go look if i zoom out i can see where that is located oh, wow look at that 
off the coast. I can't see it here. It's in the Southern Ocean. Okay, so that is kind of fun because some of these problems that you're going to run into when you run it when you do these actually is helpful to kind of see things right to kind of get a feel for and look ice sheets anyway the ice uh what are they called not the caps but the whatever floating right <laughs> pieces of ice floating in the ocean right so that's fun to do so let's come back here so i started down this island and i went to talk about that because i thought that is kind of fun to look at so now from here on out, because here's what I have really been thinking a lot about in this class, like because of the world we live in, finding something that gives you the answer to these problem sets is relatively easy. Okay. Um, and part of what I want to help you understand is why going there first is not helpful. And I, you know, it is, it is one of those struggles as a teacher right now in the time that we're at that we try to figure out how to actually help students learn because part of what you're getting from a class like this, and I hope you heard me say this kind of at the very beginning, is the ability to problem solve, the ability to actually develop your thinking skills and your, anal your analytical skills. And if you just allow the LLMs to do the work for you you miss that step and trust me your inter your technical interview may be a bit more challenging but that's not really the only reason you want to do it in this way and i'm trying to help give you uh you know some some guide rails because i get how easy it is to do it and i i was playing with something the other day and i'd spent matter of fact i think i was working on next week's work where we're getting into subqueries, and it was like, yeah, it was a bit challenging, but I waited until after I had actually f coded the solution to actually go see what was out there. And I'm like, oh God, that's right. There's just so much out there. So what I'm trying to do is create a framework that helps you do this. And in that sense, that's why I'm being more clear today about the readme file. And I really want to hear your feedback about this approach right because i get it like you're working you have other classes you have responsibilities and then you're setting down to do this work and of course it's easy to go find solutions but i guess i hope for most of you like you see the benefit but i'm also open to a discussion because i don't know everything this world is constantly changing okay so from now on 30 points has always been part of the problem set, the authenticate file, okay? But from here going forward is you need to document your thinking process when you read the problem, right? So when you read the first problem that we have, in this case, the query, right? So, and I'm not going to write this first one with you, but write a query that finds the normal ocean surface temperatures off the quote, uh, Gulf of Maine, uh, off the coast of Massachusetts to find the temperature, look at the data associated with, ah, and it even gives you the coordinates to look for, which is awesome, right? So, uh, and when you input these, I mean, we'll give you this, you know, you're not putting in the degrees, you're just putting in, and in this one, a specific location. So, and this helps you, and this even tells you, so this first one, actually, that's why I didn't do it, is it actually shows you, it gives you some really good uh, information, right? So again, how would you break this down? How did you get to the solution? Maybe it's not a long process. Maybe it's a relatively short process, okay? So that's what I will look for is your thinking process. You can show me your query attempts, right? But it will not be enough going forward. Right. Now, here's the other thing, and I this is the part I gave some thought to. Is like, if you've tried and were unsuccessful in coming up with the solution, because one of the problems this week did take me a bit. In fact, it was this last one right here. This one took me a bit to kind of wrap my head around, right? And I ended up having to use the where and the between. I'll give you that hint on this one, okay? So when I was doing it, I, I spent the time to find a solution in my own understanding because that is why I'm here 
because I want to develop, I have a coding skill set and absolutely does it help me with this stuff because it's that analytical thinking, right? But that's part of what you want to get. So, but I get too when it's like if I've spent so long and I still haven't gotten the answer, when I know the solution's out there, why wouldn't I just go find it? And so here's your step, your option if that is what you try but my hope and you'll see this and let's just read through it if you've tried and were unsuccessful in coming up with your own solution and found a solution now am I going to show you that part I actually debated on that part and I'd love to hear your feedback about that because that also for the students who may not know how to find it puts them at a disadvantage in the world that we live as well Whew, so many levels of what we think about right if you find a solution, then tell me the source, right? Give it to me. Give me the source. And in your readme file, right, what you tried. So tell me what you tried. You still document it, right? And then give me the solution, right? And, and actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually modify this because I've been playing with this wording earlier. But give me what you learned from watching it right? Give me what part of this you were able to learn from because there is still a part of learning that comes. But the key to that is giving yourself some time in the uncomfortableness. And that's really part of what I think happens is that it's uncomfortable. Okay, I'm going to speak only for me right now. It is uncomfortable when I don't know the solution. And I have to actually go give myself some thinking time around it. But the more I allow that uncomfortableness to hang out, the less uncomfortable I feel. I'm just telling you, and, and I've been in this field quite some time doing some kind of analytical, and it still is something. Because as we age, by the way, our brains change. And what part of what you want to get, and this is just based on my own research of health and wellness, is what we call cognitive reserve. And this work is great for building cognitive reserve. Anyway, my point about this is if you try and you're unsuccessful, you find your own solution and tell me the source. And, uh, and actually, in this case, I've wanna, I modified this. It'll be tell me what you learned, uh, right? And then tell me what you learned uh, from reviewing the solution, right? But if it's the only thing you tell me, right? Yeah, does it hurt your grade? But if you tell me what you learned, I still would give you some of those 30 points. And this is where... You know, it's a challenge to teach, uh, but I'm up for it. I'm totally, are you up for it is the question. So in your reply, in addition to, right, any other questions about this, and by the way, again, you do want to have that commit done and make sure you have those files set up. Did I set up all the files? Let's see, I think I did not set up, didn't, I set up the readme file, I set up the queue file. Yeah, so I actually had all, all the files, so make sure you there write this one. Right, the getting to know, and by the way, do not forget right here. Then you write the first. Well, now this is not our first query, right? So you'll now right, and generally in in this sense, keep these single spaced um, when you're writing the queries. It helps me because of one of the processes uh, that I do. Anyway, I hope this helps you move into this week. I look forward to seeing and uh, you. By the way, I've seen uh, several of you in my office. I really have enjoyed that. Please consider coming uh, to see me, if nothing else, but to get used to chatting with me so that when the interviews come around, maybe you'll feel more comfortable. All right, enough for me, longer than I'd normally like to go, but I hope it was beneficial.